We start with a defiant Senator Wendy Rogers. The Flagstaff Republican was fresh from her embrace of white nationalists and anti-Semites at a conference last weekend. The state Senate was minutes away from censuring her. Rogers spoke first. I do not apologize. I will not back down. And I am sorely disappointed in the leadership of this body. The Senate voted 24 to 3 to censure Rogers for attacking her colleagues. A sample, she threatened to destroy Republicans who voted yes. The next day, Rogers was going about her business as usual. She was raising money off the censure. But an expert on extremism issued this warning about Rogers' role in helping a white nationalist named Nick Fuentes inject his values into the Republican mainstream. What it does is it gives groups like Fuentes' organization both the legitimacy and the attention they so crave. And in so doing, they move these ideas far more rapidly into the mainstream. By the end of last week, Governor Doug Ducey was swatting away questions about his conflicting responses to Rogers, reflecting a party leadership that hasn't figured out what to do about extremists in its ranks. Joining us to discuss that and much more are political insiders, Roy Herrera, a Democratic election law attorney at the law firm Herrera Arellano, and Marcus Del Artino, a Republican consultant at First Strategic Communications and Public Relations. Welcome back to Square Off. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Uh, and I want to get to disclosures first. Roy, uh, you represent the Mark Kelly campaign in some respects? I do. Okay. And Marcus, any connection to anything we're going to discuss today? No. Other than your deep, deep knowledge of the subject by both of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, heavy topic. Let's start with the censure. Uh, Marcus, based on Wendy Rogers' social media accounts, uh, she's declaring herself a martyr. Should Senate President Karen Fan have tried to do more than just censure Rogers? Well, you know, Brian, first of all, I think we need to stop using this word white nationalist movement and call it for what it is. Call it a racist rally because this younger generation doesn't know what that means. Um, so let's just get to the heart of the point right here. I, I'm frankly proud of the, pres the president of the Senate taking action. I'm proud of her fellow members. Uh, I know it was not the easiest vote they've taken this session. Um, and so I think they are moving the ball and I think they are focusing on this discussion. Um, and, and frankly, isolating these people within the party. We're already seeing a split caucus in the Senate over this issue. Um, and we're seeing relationships that we thought, uh, you know, probably would have been in line are not anymore. Uh, and, and it's forced the governor to make a statement about it. Uh, you know, all in all, I think it's going in a generally healthy direction. I just want the discussion to keep moving. Well, to the point that Devin Burkhart made earlier about people like Rogers, Congressman Paul Gosar, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who all attended the Nick Fuentes event a week ago, giving him and those ideas mainstream credibility, how great a threat is that extremism to the Republican Party, Marcus? Well, it, it is a threat. There's, I mean, this is the party of Abraham Lincoln, for God's sakes, uh, the party of Ronald Reagan. Uh, and so it's it's somewhat mind-numbing to watch this happen. And, and by the way, we're also not taking into the fact that there has been some dabbling into the discussion of pedophilia with some of these groups um, and defending uh, some of these people that that play in that area. And I, it's for me, it's just uh, it's over the top. It's disgusting. So you know, I think Republican Party needs to continue to have this conversation and figure out you know how we vet these people out. Of Roy, Governor Ducey didn't seem to know how to respond to Rogers. He res supported her a couple of weeks ago when he was asked about Rogers and why he uh, helped her campaign with $500,000 in 2020. Two weeks ago, he said she was better than a Democrat. Last week, we heard this from the governor. So let's listen to the soundbite, and then I'll come around I've with the called question. out racism in all its forms. Racism in all its forms, categorically. Yes, I did. Yes, I, I called out racism in all its forms. The governor clearly frustrated there. He was peppered with a lot of questions by reporters at a news conference. Roy, has, has the governor done enough to quell this? 
No, absolutely not. I mean, even the recent comments by Senator Rogers, the anti-Semitic comments, defensive comments, it's not like those comments were the only offensive comments that she has made. I mean, for years now, she has said things that were offensive, inappropriate. She's associated herself with people with abhorrent views. Um, and despite that knowledge, you know, as Governor Ducey and you uh, point out, you know, her PAC or his PAC, I should say, helped uh, her get elected. And he justifies that by saying, basically, you know, she was better than the Democrat. And if we let that kind of rank partisanship excuse, you know, us overlooking some of these offensive comments, then that's that's really bad. Um, we're in a bad place. And so I do think he needs to do more and Republican leadership needs to do more than just this recent censure to call out, you know, how inappropriate and racist these comments are. And I wish there were many more people in the Republican Party like Marcus, you know, calling it for what it is. Um, and it needs to continue because as you played in the first clip, it doesn't look like Senator Rogers has any real contrition here. So I imagine this is probably going to continue and Republicans are going to have to answer questions about it. So what is the more? You know, the governor's feeling is, and he said this a few times, the voters decide. Leave it up to the voters. For years, no Republicans would dare touch Joe Arpaio. They were going to leave it up to the voters. Doug Ducey used Joe Arpaio in his closing argument to the 2014 uh, Republican primary for governor. So what is the more that you're talking about, Roy? So there's a couple of things. I mean, the, the immediate, I think, question would be, does she deserve to still continue to serve in the body? Uh, you know, the state Senate, uh, whether she should, you know, remain there. I mean, we've hit, been in positions before where, you know, the, the Senate or the House has investigated their own and, and decided whether a person should be booted out or not based on wrongdoing. So that's something that uh, may be considered. But then beyond that, and probably more realistically, I think what we're talking about is withdrawing political support and, in fact, perhaps encouraging a primary of hers uh, by a more mainstream Republican. These are the kinds of things that they could do. Now, yes, ultimately, the voters in her district will decide whether she goes back or not. Um, that's up to them. But Republican leaders, including Governor Ducey, could still do more to make clear that she shouldn't be in the Senate. Marcus, what's the more? Is that, do you agree with Roy? Well, to a certain extent, I'm, I'm not um, I'm not one to advocate for uh, kicking people out of the Senate and the House uh, because I think it's a slippery slope and we're finally going to get to a point where it, it gets to be a bit much. I, I think you you do need to present the choice to the voters. I do think wish that, you know, more advocacy organizations, uh, you know, would make a statement about this. Certainly the business organizations uh, that we all know about uh, come out with a strong statement. Um, and, you know, I think just leaders in general, community leaders, business leaders, education leaders, you know, from every point of life need to come out and sort of con condemn this language and let it know it's not acceptable in Arizona. It's uh, certainly not acceptable within the Republican Party. Uh, I do want to know a Republican candidate for Governor Matt Salmon did call on Rogers to resign. Again, one of a handful of uh, Republicans who's, who've kind of put themselves out there. Uh, let's move on to the governor's future. He Finally, last week, closed the door on running for the U.S. Senate here in Arizona. Marcus, what's the governor's next he's, job? He's closed this door like 27 times. Well, apparently it's Mitch over. McConnell kept calling him, so... I, what's I, you know, this is the, the gift that keeps on giving, I guess. I, I, I closed the door on it months ago, okay. but anyway... Um, and the problem is, of course, it, it opened the door to let Donald Trump take another shot at the governor, which had he been studying, the governor said repeatedly he was not going to run for Senate, but it is what it is. You know, I think the governor, look, he's an executive. I, I think it, initially he's going to go out and entertain some meetings with some business executives and talk about sort of what new adventures may lie ahead. But I don't put out of the picture at all uh, certainly a, a run for higher office, whether that's he's picked as a vice presidential nominee or possibly decides to run himself. Roy, what's his next move? Well, there's a lot of been, there's been a lot of speculation about 2024. Um, I don't have any inside knowledge on this, but it seems as though he believes he's got a, a national political future, and I think you know he's going to look to see what that what that move will be in 2024. But like Marcus, I'm not surprised that ultimately he decided to pass on this. I think probably the most, you know, disappointed person, though, as a result of this is Senator Mitch McConnell, who, you know, apparently has been calling him every week to get in. 
And I think he's been doing that primarily because Senator McConnell recognizes the current weakness of the Republican field in that Senate primary and wanted a stronger candidate. So he has to be disappointed with this decision. But ultimately, I'm not surprised that Governor Ducey has passed and we'll look at something else in the future.